Hello friends, welcome back to our channel and hope you're having a great time. In today's episode, we'll begin with an update where Elon Musk meets Brazil's president to discuss Starlink service plans in the Amazon, followed by Boeing's Starliner spacecraft ultimately becoming successful in returning to flight after a prolonged delay of several years. Let's get started with Elon Musk's Starlink service plans on Amazon. Recently, on the 20th of May, Elon Musk had a meeting with Brazilian President Jair Bolsonaro, and that meeting has become a major step forward for Starlink services in the Amazon. According to reports, Bolsonaro previously stated that he had planned a private meeting with a very important person who is recognized throughout the world, but the name of that important person was not revealed at first. Later, it came out that Bolsonaro was going to have a meeting with SpaceX CEO. Bolsonaro had hinted that Musk is coming to offer his help for our Amazon. Musk, too, had shared his excitement for his meeting. He stated, Super excited to be in Brazil for the launch of Starlink for 19,000 unconnected schools in rural areas and environmental monitoring of Amazon. As for reports, the meeting was held in a luxurious resort in Sao Paulo State, and it was arranged by Communications Minister Fabio Faria. Later, Faria had stated that they're seeking partnerships with Musk to improve internet in schools and health facilities in rural areas through Starlink services, and as well as working for preservation of the rainforest. Plans for this meeting were made in late 2021 when the Brazilian government had announced that they'll secure satellite internet in the Amazon with the help of SpaceX. And finally, the meeting had taken place in the first half of 2022. Other than providing improved internet connectivity, SpaceX will also help the Brazilian government in finding out illegal deforestation of Amazon rainforest. Musk stated in a video posted by Brazil's Minister of Communications that, We are looking forward to providing connectivity to the least served people of Brazil. With better connectivity, we can help ensure the preservation of the Amazon. During the event, Bolsonaro said the region was really important to Brazil. Bolsonaro stated, we count on Elon Musk so that the Amazon is known by everyone in Brazil and in the world to show the exuberance of this region, how we are preserving it, and how much harm those who spread lies about this region are doing to us. Our next update deals with Boeing's Starliner spacecraft ultimately becoming successful in returning to flight after a prolonged delay of several years. Almost more than three years have passed after SpaceX's Crew Dragon spacecraft first safely reached orbit. And also, three and a half years have gone after Boeing's Starliner crew capsule had carried out its first ill-fated launch. Presently, Boeing has finally become able to return their Starliner spacecraft back to flight, and that too, successfully. On the 19th of May at 6.54 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time, the Starliner spacecraft was successfully launched atop ULA's Atlas V rocket from the Launch Complex 41 of Cape Canaveral Space Force Station. As per reports, nearly a four-and-a-half-minute burn, the Atlas V booster powered by a Russian-built RD-180 engine, was separated, and then the two RL-10 engines of Centaur upper stage got ignited, propelling the spacecraft towards outer Earth. Six minutes after the upper stage ignition, the engines were cut off, and nearly 12 minutes after liftoff, the Starliner spacecraft ultimately got separated from the upper stage. In comparison to the launch trajectory of SpaceX's Crew Dragon, the Starliner got separated from Atlas V upper stage before reaching orbit. Though a bit risky, this type of launch method has been chosen to limit stress on the spacecraft and provide safe descent to the crew in case of a high altitude abort. Normally, for this suborbital launch trajectory, if the spacecraft can't complete a minute-long orbital insertion burn, then it will have to re-enter Earth's atmosphere nearly an hour after liftoff. Thankfully, during the second orbital flight test of Starliner, OFT-2, the minute-long burn of thrusters was carried out successfully, 
and the spacecraft got inserted into a stable circular orbit. NASA and Boeing initially aimed to dock Starliner to the station at 7.10 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time, but then waited a few more time to gain better lighting and communications conditions. Docking was further delayed as a small anomaly. It led to reset of the space capsule's NASA docking system. After that reset had successfully worked, Starliner then linked up smoothly with its docking port. As OFT-2 is completed without any significant issue except when one of Starliner's thrusters had malfunctioned during its critical orbital insertion, it's expected that Boeing's next priority would be Starliner's crew flight test, a crewed launch debut that could happen before the end of 2022. During docking, NASA astronaut Robin Hines stated from the space station, Starliner is looking beautiful on the front of the space station. Kathy Luters, NASA's associate administrator for space operations, said, The last few hours have been excruciating, you know, seeing that spacecraft just out of reach of ISS. This is a really critical demonstration mission, and it was important for us to get that demo data and get the learning from each of the steps along the way, and really put the vehicle through its paces. Mark Nappy, Boeing's vice president and program manager for the company's commercial crew program, said, it was really something to watch. It was really nail-biting watching that vehicle sit out there for a little while until it was time to come in. The original OFT, which launched in December 2019, ended prematurely after Starliner suffered a series of software glitches and got stranded in an orbit too low to allow an ISS rendezvous. And OFT-2 was originally supposed to lift off on July 30, 2021, but the launch was aborted. Later, Boeing and NASA had reported that 13 of Starliner's 24 main oxidizer valves had failed to open during a pre-launch test just a few hours before liftoff. It had resulted in thorough investigations of the matter, and the final conclusion came out that the Aerojet rocket dyne supplied valves had a faulty design and that Boeing had failed to properly insulate those valves from humidity and water intrusion. It also delayed the next OFT-2 launch attempt by almost 10 months. After almost three years of work to rectify those software and hardware failures, Starliner has finally reached a stable orbit without running into a major problem. Report says when one of the thrusters on Starliner had malfunctioned, that thruster's backup had fired to compensate but failed before completing the burn. Then a tertiary backup thruster was ignited, Starliner was able to get into the right orbit for an ISS rendezvous. Mark Nappy said, the system is designed to be redundant, and it performed like it was supposed to. Now the team is working on the why as to why we had those anomalies occur. Hines, the NASA astronaut, congratulated the Boeing team for this grand success. He said, Today marks a great milestone, providing additional commercial access to low Earth orbit, sustaining the ISS, and enabling NASA's goal of returning humans to the Moon and eventually to Mars. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe for more videos like this. Hit the like button if you find the video interesting. And kindly provide your valuable feedback in the comment section. This will help us to improve.